Today, I'm gonna to show you how to cut out hair in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on the all new Flurn.com, where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is super cool because a lot of the time you're gonna be photographing your subject indoors, whether it's in a studio or a clear backdrop or whatever it is, and you're gonna to wanna to put that subject on a different backdrop, whether it's a different color or you bring in like some mountains, whatever it is. Um, the trickiest part about cutting a subject out is getting their hair right, because hairs, it's crazy. It goes everywhere, and uh, in this case, we're gonna be using really curly hair, which is actually super difficult and challenging. So I chose something very difficult, so if you can master this, what we're teaching you today, then you can cut out just about any hair from its background in Photoshop. So we're gonna do it, it's actually not as hard as you'd think, and uh, we're gonna knock out some cutting out hair in Photoshop. So here's our image for today. It's a beautiful portrait from Photolia.com, and as you can see, she's got crazy curly hair, um, which is what my hair is gonna look like in about a year. <laughs> and um, We're gonna be cutting it out from the background. So basically, I just need a really good way to select out um, the background as opposed to her hair. So when you're doing this, look for differences in either light versus dark or a difference in color. Like if you had a green backdrop and red hair, you could use that as a difference as well. So in this case, we have a nice difference between the light backdrop, it's a very light color, pretty much white, and her hair, which is a little bit darker. So we're gonna use that difference to our advantage. Now, the way I wanna do that is by creating a selection. So I'm gonna create a selection using channels. Now, channels sound difficult, but they're just another great way to create selections. So let's click here on our channels, and we're gonna click on our red channel, then our green channel, and our blue channel. And basically what I'm looking for is the maximum amount of contrast between the background and the subject. And you can see the red channel, the hair is pretty light, and the background is light as well. Now compare that to the blue channel, where the hair gets a lot darker. So this is actually what we wanna start with. We're gonna start with the blue channel, then we're gonna enhance that a little bit. So to enhance that blue channel, let's go ahead and duplicate this. So I'm gonna click and drag it down to the new channel icon. There we go, and we can see we have blue copy. Now, what I really wanna do is make our lights a little bit lighter, and I wanna make our darks a little bit darker. Again, we're gonna be using this to actually make a selection. So we're gonna change that's basically the lights and the darks by using levels. So I'm gonna click on this blue copy, and we're gonna hit Command or Control L. That's for levels. Okay, now our background is pretty much already white because this is a, it's a well shot stock image and the background's nice and clean. If it's not white for, you know, when you're working on your image, just click on this guy and drag this from the right to the left just a little bit and that'll kind of lighten up your lights. All right, what I am gonna do is take my black point and we're gonna bring this up to the right a bit. And what that's doing is it's just kind of making all this hair that I have selected, it's just making the hair a little bit darker. Now we're gonna take the white point and bring it up a little bit lighter as well. So what we see basically is the darks have gotten a lot darker. We could take this in and you can adjust your midpoint too. Basically you wanna find a nice balance between your hair being dark and the background being light, but you, you don't wanna to go too far. Let's see, if you go too far, can you see how the hair, let's just zoom in there. You can see how it starts to look like kind of scraggly and nasty, right? So you wanna you, you want to go to the point where it still looks like a, a pretty natural um, basically pieces of hair. So again, if you go too far, it just kind of looks too coarse. So keep it where it's a little bit more natural looking and that's gonna work well. Okay, so that looks good. We've got dark hair on a light background. So let's hit okay. And all this is done inside the channels. So what we need to do now is we need to turn this into a selection that we can actually use on our layer. So now that we've made this change with our channel, we made the background really light and her hair dark, what we need to do is turn this into a selection. It's super easy to do. Just hold down the control or the command key and click on the thumbnail for this blue copy, which is what we made the change. So control or command and click. And you're gonna see, let's just zoom in, that we now have a selection. Now, whenever you make a selection out of channels, it's always gonna select out the lights, okay? So the darks don't get selected, just the lights do. So now that we have that selection, we can actually go back into our layers and I can click on my background layer and we can see the selection remains. So if you make a selection in channels, it's gonna stay when you're working in layers. All right, now all I have to do is click on my layer mask. There we go. And we can see what that did basically is created a layer mask and everything that was dark is now invisible. So we've got a layer mask, but it's actually the opposite of what we want. It made our subject not visible and the background visible, not a big deal. Just click on your layer mask and go to image, 
down to adjustments, and then down here to invert, or you can hit Command or Control I. There we go. And now we can see our subject is actually cut out from the background. You can see the background is nice and transparent. Um, some of her skin is also cut out from the backdrop. So we needed to do a little bit of work on our layer mask. Now to view my layer mask a little bit easier, I wanna view what my layer mask looks like in black and white so I can actually paint on my layer mask. We're gonna hold Alt or Option and click on the layer mask. And there we can see that's pretty scary and nasty. So let's just grab our brush tool and then I'm gonna paint white right over here with our brush tool because everywhere her face is, we actually want this to be visible, right? We don't want this area to be invisible. So white on a layer mask makes that part of the layer visible and black makes that part of the layer invisible. Okay, so looking at this now, everything that's white is going to be visible. So again, let's hold Alt or Option and click on our layer mask again. And there we can see our subject is cut out of her background now. Okay, now it's time to test it. So we got our cutout. What is it gonna look like on a different color backdrop? Okay, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take this layer. Let's go ahead and put this below our layer with our subject. And I'm gonna fill it with the color that's, uh, let's try her lip color. I'm gonna hit B for the brush tool, then Alt or Option, and that's gonna bring up my color picker tool. Let's go ahead and grab a lip color there. And then Alt or Option Delete is gonna fill with that red. All right, let's do something like a, a skin tone there. All right, I thought the red was a little bit too much. All right, maybe a purplish that's in her eyes. Yeah, that's kind of nice. If you want to change this, just hit Command or Control U and you can change any color. Maybe we'll find something that actually just kind of suits. Maybe a nice compliment. Okay, that's kind of cool. A nice blue, desaturated blue. Looking good. So now that we have this color in the background, you can see we're looking great. She's cut out of her background, but there's a little bit of like what's called fringing around her hair. Let's just zoom in so we can see this. Okay, this is what you're gonna get a lot of the time when you're actually cutting someone out of their backdrop. You'll see like a little bit of this like white area around a person's hair. And that's what we need to take care of. So if I hit shift and click on this layer mask, we can see this is the before and the after. So the hair is cut out well, it's just a little bit too light. So what we need to do now is we need to find a way to take care of these light areas where it's just, it's too light right around the edges. So here's my big suggestion. We're gonna use a new layer. We're gonna clip it to this existing layer to make it only visible where this layer is. And then we can either use the brush tool or the clone stamp tool to fill in these white areas. So I'm gonna create a new layer. Just kind of show you guys how clipping masks work. If I were to just paint red on this new layer right over here, and now let's say I only want this red to be visible where my subject is visible. All I have to do is right click here and go to create clipping mask. Okay, now this red is only visible where my subject is visible because we have a clipping mask and my subject is only visible right here because we already cut her out of the background. Okay, now this red isn't that important. I'm not actually gonna use the red. We're going to use a different technique. So let's go ahead and get rid of the red and we're gonna use the clone stamp tool. So S for the clone stamp tool, and basically I'm just gonna clone stamp some of her hair over to the edges. Now, the other thing we wanna keep in mind in this case, because the fringe is white, right? We have white fringing right around the edges. I wanna set my layer blend mode to darken, okay? Because all I wanna do is get rid of that white. I don't need to change anything else about the color, just get rid of that white. So we're gonna change this layer blend mode from normal down to darken, okay? And now all I have to do is basically just grab my clone stamp tool and from the inside of the hair, just clone stamp outwards. And you don't have to be too incredibly precise when you're doing this because your layer mask set to darken is gonna take care of most of the work for you. All right, there we go. And because I'm using the clone stamp tool, what I'm actually you know, clone stamping onto the hair is actual hair texture and color. So I don't have to try to make anything up or be particularly skilled about this when, <laughs> when I'm clone stamping. It's just gonna, for the most part, just take care of itself. All right. Now, if you're wondering if there's a way to cut a person's hair out and just get absolutely no fringing at all, um, in my experience, it's really, really difficult to do. This is a way that's gonna work most of the time for you because Fringing is just kind of going to be part of any selection that you have. No selection that you make is going to be perfect in Photoshop. This is just a way to make the selections that you do make look a lot more perfect than they actually are. So this would be my big suggestion if you're going to be cutting hair out from the background. Now, again, keep in mind I chose a very difficult example. If you're photographing someone with straight hair, 
this would be so much easier because you really wouldn't have this, you know, crazy fringing and flyaway hairs and curly mess everywhere. So if you can nail this, you can definitely do any other type of hair that you come across. Okay, so you can see by setting my layer blend mode to darken, it's not trying to color or do anything else to the hair. It's just taking care of the fringing because the fringe was in the light area. All right, there we go. And now we've taken care. So we can see there's a before and the after with that area. So now if I wanted to change my background color, super easy. Let's hit Control or Command U. I can bring my saturation up and I can change my color and she's gonna be perfectly cut out of any, I kinda of like that green, oh it's nice. We can make this a little bit lighter or a little bit darker. She's gonna be perfectly cut out of any background that you put her on. So let's take a look at the before and after. Here's our before and here's our after. Thanks so much for watching, Florin guys. I hope this helped you learn how to cut your subject out from the background even when dealing with tricky hair. Just remember the couple key points. First, you wanna look for a difference between your subject and the background. Usually, if your subject's a little bit darker, you want a light background. Or if your subject is really light, then you want a dark background. Then you can use channels to make that difference into a selection. Then load that as a layer mask, and then use a clipping mask to take care of any fringing. That's all. <laughs> and if you have any questions about this episode, just watch it over again, or leave us a comment right down below. And if you have an idea for a new episode, please leave that in a comment down below, because that's how we come up with ideas for our episodes. If you like what we're doing here at Flurn, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, because you can receive free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week, and share this with your friends. That would be good too. Thanks so much, guys. I'll flurn you later.